Pashini Group has a price earnings ratio of 18. It's got a market cap of 30 billion rand. Consists of 14 trading brands selling lifestyle products that range from fashion, jewelry, accessories, cosmetics, cell phones, homeware, and more. Pashini trades, trades in over 1,700 stores and manufactures 70% of all of its products locally. That's an interesting one, manufacturing mm. uh, such a large portion of their products locally. What does that mean for cost control? Yeah, look, I don't think it means terribly much. I mean, it might be perceived by some to be uh, a positive. But what I think is worth noting about all of these guys is they all source and procure very well. So they have all shortened the time to getting stuff in store. They've all shortened the time that stuff stays in store. So they've increased the pace of the turn. And they all procure very well because they buy stuff in China. Many of them have buyers that go to Barcelona and to Paris and to New York. They then get samples of stuff, send it to China, get it made so it's within stores and sort of six weeks later on a non-branded basis. So they're all very well run and they all have good distribution and warehousing. Many of them have outsourced that to spe specific or specialized logistics providers. They're all fabulous. True Earths for me is impressive because they've probably gone furthest in terms of this multi-brand strategy with different stores. And they've also gone into the sports apparel area with Sports Scene and Total Sports and all of those guys. So I think uh, they stumbled a couple of years ago, four or five years ago. They had a management change and they've come back pretty strongly. Yeah. However, this is not a secret. It's pretty much in the share price. It's in the share price. Uh, tell us about their African growth right now and the type of earnings that are coming through from Africa. They've got 70 stores across Africa. They're looking at opening up 57 more. That's a lot more than the likes of True Words has right now and, and Woolworths. Yeah, and I think it's also because they're multi-branded. So there's, there's a number of arrows, uh, effectively. Truworth is obviously a very single-branded, single focus. Um, because they have more stores, they cover more areas, um, they have much more potential, I think, to go into the African market. So, so how, are, how are the Af African operations doing right now? And do you, think, uh, do you think it's going to be lucrative for them to enter into a market like yeah. Nigeria, of course, and Mozambique yeah. that they're targeting? Africa's tough. I think it's, it's not an easy market to get, in, get into. I think the primary concern is sites. Um, these, these retailers tend to, to uh, set up, obviously, in large malls. And, and there's, there's not a lot of large malls uh, that, are, that are being built in Africa. Obviously, it's a, it's a different type of market. So I think they're going in quite slowly. And I think uh, in terms of uh, will it become a, a massive focus or a massive, uh, uh, a massive um, a generator of earnings for them, uh, probably not in the short term. It's probably a much longer term story. So overall, when you look at their model relative to the other models and the other businesses in this space right now, uh, how well is Fashini doing? Uh, going back to my, my thinking that we, I would rather be invested in a company that can improve its margin due to operational efficiencies, I think that's what you're exactly getting in Fashini. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the, the cycle of them bringing goods from, from manufacture into, into the stores, it's, it's decreased from 180 days to 130 days. So that's, uh, that's really showing that they, they are winning that battle. They're getting fashion at the right time in the right place, um, and that's what you want when, you, when you're dealing in a fashion retail. Especially with the high churn, you don't want to be sitting with inventory on your books. Um, uh, for you, Paul, would you mm. say that uh, when you hear numbers like this, when you hear that they're improving their inventory management, uh, do you, would you say that this is looking more attractive than a true words, and there, there is this growth that's going to come through? Yeah, the other two differences to note is that true words doesn't have the sort of at home equivalent. So at home, which is of course household goods, it belongs to Fashini. The other thing that Fashini has is, is jewelry, which I'm not entirely sure how to feel about that. It's American, Swiss and Stern. So they're quite strong in that space. And that's also got issues in terms of stock and turnover. And then there's RCS, which is Fashini's uh, financing arm, which is similar to Truett. So again, it's got a whole lot going for it. Um, the new CEO, Doug Murray, I mean, it all looks fine to me. Um, I don't really know what else to say other than that they're on top of their game. And I think I'm going to go with the idea that they are plenty warm enough, but not as hot as some of the others in the sector. Okay, so uh, lukewarm. Uh, lukewarm for you, hot or not, where do you stand on the stock? I'm Just over 125 rand. Yeah, I'm going to go hot. As I said to you, this sector is, is at a high PE, um, but I'm going to go hot in that it does trade at a discount to, to the others, uh, and that discount should be closing over time. So I think relative to the others, definitely hot. And room for growth. Absolutely.